Larry, if you would join me. As chairman of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, it is my honor, Larry, to welcome you into the Hall of Fame family and to ask Commissioner Manfred to please read the inscription on your plaque. Larry Kenneth Robert Walker, Montreal National League, 1989 to 1994. Colorado National League, 1995 to 2004. St. Louis National League, 2004 to 2005. Dynamic right fielder with a feared plate presence who brought all out effort and five tool skill set to his native Canada's Expos before becoming Rockies superstar. Selected as 1997 National League MVP after amassing 409 total bases, most in the big leagues in 49 seasons. Major League leader in batting average three times in four years, hitting 363 in 1998, 379 in 1999, and 350 in 2001. Five-time All-Stars arm accuracy and range earned him seven Gold Glove Awards. Finished career as first player in history with at least a 310 batting average, 300 home runs, and 200 stolen bases. Harold Reynolds, you stepped on the field with some immensely talented baseball players. Where does Larry Walker stack up? He's right up there. You know, and here's the thing everybody's missing. He's 6'5", about 215 when he was playing. That was big for those days that we were playing in there. Amazing athlete. It's also amazing that the Rockies had been the only active franchise that never featured a future Hall of Famer in a game, Tom. That's hard to fathom. Amazing, and you see that plaque there. That will be the first one hanging in the Hall of Fame with a Colorado Rockies hat on I think the inductee. This, this breaks through, Tom. I mean, Todd Helton's gotta be sitting there thinking, my numbers are gonna hold up now. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Hall, Hall of Fame, Fame class, class of 2020, Larry Walker. moment so thank you well I was told today would be the day it would come reality and sink in and from sleep not sleeping last night to my nervousness right now it's reality and for making it real I say thank you to all the writers who put that check mark by my name heck even those at you that didn't your jobs are not easy and thank you to the Hall of Fame, Jane, Whitney, Shesta, Tim, Jeff, and Josh, and all the Hall of Fame staff. You've all been a joy to be around and have made me feel so very welcome. And to the amazing people of Cooperstown, I thank you very much for your hospitality. I also believe social media provided my Hall of Fame candidacy a big push. To each of you who helped share my accomplishments, I'm thankful you were in my corner. I am Canadian. A couple of years ago, I fell short in the voting. And I don't do much on social media, but I did one of those hashtag things on Twitter. And it read, Fergie needs a friend. I was, of course, referring to Ferguson Jenkins, who was the only Canadian in Cooperstown. Today, I finally get to join Can Fergie as the second Canadian in the Hall of Fame and the first Canadian position player. Fergie, it's an honor. I was born in Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Like many Canadians, it's almost a given that as you age, you're going to play hockey. In fact, you're pretty much born with skates on and a stick in your hand. I did play hockey for many years, and as a kid, I had the privilege of playing alongside future Hall of Famer Cam Neely. But unfortunately, 
Or fortunately, as much as I tried, I was not good enough as a goalie, and baseball came along. Compared to the men sitting behind me, I did not play much ball growing up. We didn't have high school baseball or any serious travel ball. I played no more than 15 to 20 baseball games a summer until I was 16. But I did play lots of fast pitch softball on the Maple Ridge Lanes, Lanes team with my dad and my three brothers, all wearing the same uniform. That was probably when my brothers would tell me they taught me everything I know about baseball. Some of my earliest memories included mom sitting in the stands cheering while we all played. My mom, Mary, my dad, Larry, and my brothers, Barry, Carrie, and Gary, the rhyming family. I'm sure I did learn something from my brothers. I also learned from my Little League coaches and with the Pitt Meadows Lions, Lauren Upstell, Paul Hamlin, and of course, my dad. And also my time with the Coquitlam Reds in 1983 and 4 with coaches Don Archer, Bill Green, and Wayne Martin. But even after playing in Coquitlam and then in 84 for Team British Columbia in a tournament and Team Canada in the World Youth Tournament, I apparently didn't understand all the rules of the game. I had a lot of learning to do. My first year in pro ball, after being scouted by Bill McKenzie and Jim Fanning, I was playing just 40 miles from where we stand today in Utica, New York. For the Utica Blue Sox, managed by Ken Brett, George's brother and a great big leaguer in his own right, and former Major League coach of many years, Gene Glenn. I'm going to share a story about that year. I was on first and Gino was coaching third base, put the hit and run on. I took off for second and of course I didn't peek in to see where the ball was hit. And as I'm round in second, heading to third, Gino's screaming at me to get back. Well, it turned out the ball was hit in the air to right center. So I got back, slid in, easily safe, called out. Get up telling the umpies blind and a bunch of other choice words. And Ken Brent, who was that first coach in that day, grabbed my arm and said, Larry, you're out. I argued with him too. It turns out, getting back to first base, you do not cut right behind the pitcher's mound through the infield, which is what I did. I already touched second once, why the heck do I gotta touch it again? Needless to say, I learned the rules and eventually how to run the bases. I like telling that story because I know there's kids out there that maybe don't have the ability or experience, but I tell them to keep fighting because me standing here right now is proof that hard work can pay off. The minor leagues are where most of my baseball learning took place. Call it on-the-job training, and I got quite a bit of it. My stops were in Utica, Burlington, Iowa, West Palm Beach, Jacksonville, and Indianapolis. Along with four years of winter instructional ball and a season of winter ball in Mexico, I always went into a new team thinking there was always more to learn, and there always was. So many coaches helped me along the way in my early days, along with Ken and Gino, fielding from J.R. Minor, hitting from Ralph Rowe, all my base running from Tommy Harper, and a little bit of everything from Mike Quaddy. Those are just a few as there's way too many to mention. I always be grateful that the Montreal Expos took a chance on me and gave me an opportunity to play baseball professionally. To all the Expo fans and people of Montreal, it was a great honor to put on the Expo uniform and represent my home country. I enjoyed many years in Montreal, None of them as good as that 1994 team. We all lost out that year from the work stoppage, and nobody knows what would have happened that year. But I still imagine what it would have been like to bring a World Series to Quebec. To the fans hoping for their team to return to Montreal, I join you in hoping before long that Major League Baseball returns to your beautiful city. In 1993, the Expos were in Denver when the Rockies hosted their first home games. Even as a visiting player, I never forgot what it felt like to be in a ballpark surrounded by 85,000 people. The scenery of Denver nestled in the mountains reminded me of where I grew up in Maple Ridge. So as the 94 Expos team slowly dispersed, in some way it felt natural to find my way to another great team in the Colorado Rockies. I feel pri privileged that I'm here right now in Cooperstown representing the Rockies franchise and their fans. I thank the Monfort and McMorris families for bringing me to Denver and the GM at the time, Bob Gebhardt, for ironing out all, all the details. I had 10 great years wearing the CR on my cap, perhaps none better than the first, 1995, when we won the first wild card. What an incredible way to be introduced to the fans of the Rockies. I thank the Rockies fans for always showing your support, and I hope real soon that that ticker tape parade comes rolling down Blake Street. 
And finally, the St. Louis Cardinals. I, I only spent a little over a year in your uniform, but you made me feel like it was many, many more. It was a thrill every time I wore the birds on the bat jersey and every time I took the field in front of that sea of red. Thank you, Cardinal Nation, for welcoming me into your family. To my Major League Managers, Buck Rogers, Felipe Alou, Tom Runnels, Don Baylor, Clint Hurdle, Buddy Bell, Jim Leland, and Hall of Famer, Tony La Russa, I thank you for putting my name in the lineup. You and every one of your coaching staffs made me a better player. I'm always asked who was your favorite teammate. An impossible question to answer as I've had so many I enjoyed and so many others that had a big impact on me. Thanks to all my teammates, both in the majors and the minors. I learned a lot from you and from watching my opponents too, both what to do and what not to do. But I do want to give a shout out to a few guys who took me in during my rookie days in 1989 with the Expos. Tom Foley, Spike Owen, Mike Fitzgerald, Dave Martinez, and especially Tim Wallach. They all welcomed me into the fraternity of being a major leaguer and made the transition from the minors to the majors smooth and easy. I was very grateful for that. I had the same agents my entire career, and I thank the speakers of Sport Agency, Bob Guhuli, Jim Bronner, Bob Greenwald, Pete Smith, one guy by me the entire journey, Pat Rooney. Pat has since retired, and now Barry Meister has the honor of putting up with me. And to my family, my three brothers and their families, you're all going to be here for this occasion, and it would have been a long overdue family reunion. But unfortunately, COVID-19 took that away from most of you. I hope we can have that reunion real soon, and I thank all of you for your love and support throughout the years. To mom and dad, I am the youngest of four boys, and I think it's safe to say neither one of you have it, had it easy in raising us, especially those other three clowns. You supported all of us in our sporting adventures, hockey, softball, volleyball, baseball, football, bowling, whatever it was, you always allowed us to give it a go. Looking back, I don't even mind that I got the hand-me-down equipment after the other three wore it out. School was a struggle for me, but I always felt supported by you both, even when I didn't come home with a report card full of A's or B's, or C's. There's D's and F's, I realize that. And when Bob Rogers from the Expos came into town and offered me a contract to play pro ball for $1,500 US, you simply said go for it. Allowed me to hop in my Pathfinder and drive across North America from Maple Ridge to Florida and give it a try. That 1500 was about two grand Canadian at the time and I felt like I just won the lottery. But when life in the minor leagues was difficult, you always did your best to float me a little money. It meant a lot. You were both always there giving your support and love I swear sometimes I looked up the stands during a game, you two looked way more nervous than I was on the field. You're always into every second of every game, and knowing you were following along helped me enjoy my career so much more. I thank and love you both. <laughs> to Krista and Angela, you gave me amazing children. I'm a proud da daddy because of you both. Broxton, Kanan, and Shana. It's hard to believe how time flies and how old you all are now. It seems like just yesterday when dirty diapers were stinking up the house and toys were laying around just waiting to be stepped on. All great memories, of course. You guys can't cry. <laughs> it was always hard coming home after a tough loss or when I didn't play well. But starting when Broxton ended the world in 1993 to my final game in 05, those feelings would always disappear once I saw any of you three. I'm so proud to call all three of you my children Happiness and love fills my heart every single day because of you guys. A couple other important people. My best friend Chris, from our early days in the Expos organization to today, you've always had my back. And my girlfriend Donna. Life after baseball has been anything but boring. Thank you for being part of this incredible journey. Plus, you keep me on the right track, eating right and staying healthy. Otherwise, I wouldn't be fitting into this suit, trust me. And of course, thank you, Canada, for all your support I've received throughout the years from my home country. I share this honor with every Canadian, and I hope that all you Canadian kids out there that have dreams of playing in the big leagues, that see me here today, 
gives you another reason to go after those dreams. To my adopted home, the United States, I thank you for allowing this Canadian kid to come into your country to live and play your great pastime. I think we're all very fortunate to have two pretty amazing countries side by side. There are too many others to mention, but I'm very hopeful that you all know who you are and know that I'm very grateful for your love, support and friendship over the years. To the entire class of 2020, it's taken a little longer to get here and reach this day, but it has been a complete honor to share it with all of you. I will finish by saying I've never considered myself a Hall of Famer at anything, not a thing. I honestly see myself as an average guy, and I'm good with average. I've lived my life trying to never get too high and never get too low. But to stand on this stage right now and tell you that I'm feeling average would be a complete lie. My feet have not touched the ground all day. And I'll say this again, this honor really doesn't happen without every single one of my teammates. It doesn't happen without any of them. And in my eyes, every one of your names are on that plaque as well. I am truly honored, humbled, to be part of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. And it is a privilege to be part of this family right here. Thank you all so much.